Hi friends, I am Krishn Kumar, Assistant Professor at School of Law, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwadhyale, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today in this lecture, we have an overview of Arms Act 1959 and the Arms Rules 1962. It, this topic is comprising of seven modules. Module 1, which talks about introduction. Module 2, definitions. Module 3, regarding acquisition, possession, manufacture, sale, import, export and transport of arms and ammunition. Module 4, talks about the powers and punishments. Module 5, miscellaneous provisions of the act. Module 6, the arms rules 1962 and module 7, talks about the conclusion. As we all know that firearms are to be regulated, restrictions and safeguards in relation to the possession of and control over firearms and ammunition, though exam to a degree will ever be called for in the interest of the state for the maintenance of law and order in general and for ensuring public peace and security in particular. At the same time, with rapid strides in education and industrialization, the social order in the modern setup requires that the rigors of the law of arms, particularly firearms, should be softened and liberalized so that peace loving citizens should have the satisfaction of having a capacity of using licensed firearm for sport, personal security and self defense when an emergent situation cannot be controlled except by the use of a firearm with the statutory limits. With these objects, the Arms Act 1959, which is Act Number 54 of 1959, was enacted by the Parliament to consolidate and amend the law relating to the arms and ammunition with the provision that it shall come into force on such date as the central government may specify in the official gazette appointed which has been fixed as 1-10-1962 and on such date the act came into operation. The main provision of the act is to rectify the rigors of Indian Arms Act 1878 and the rules made thereunder which were intended by the British rulers to disarm the entire nation and continue to make it difficult for law-abiding citizens to possess firearms, even for self-defense, whereas terrorist mercenaries, ducats, gangs and other anti-social, pro-imperialistic or anti-national elements were using not only civilian weapons, but also bombs, hand grenades, brand guns, stand guns, 0 .303 bore service rifles and revolvers of military specification for penetrating heinous or rabid crimes against the society and the state. This is all about this module. The Arms Act 1959 extends to the whole of India. This act also defines certain words which bear specific meanings of those words which are used in the act. So, we should have a look on the definitions given in the act itself. Likewise, section 2b defines ammunition, which says that ammunition means ammunition for any firearm and includes number 1, rockets, bombs, grenades, shells and others like missiles. Second, articles designed for torpedo service and submarine mining. Third, other articles containing or designed or adapted to contain explosive, fulminating or fissionable material or noxious liquid, gas or other such thing, whether capable of use with firearms or not. Fourth, charges for firearms and accessories for such charges. Fifth, fuses and friction tubes. Sixth, parts of and machinery for manufacturing ammunition and Seventhly, such ingredients or ammunition as the central government may by notification in the official gazette specify in this behalf. Section 2c defines arms, which says arms means articles of any description 
designed or adapted as a weapon for offense or defense and includes firearms, sharp edged or other deadly weapons and parts of machinery for manufacturing arms but does not include articles designed solely for domestic or agricultural uses such as a lathi or an ordinary walking stick and weapons incapable of being used otherwise than as toys or being converted into serviceable weapons section 2e defines firearm as firearm means arms of any description designed or adapted to discharge a projectile or projectiles of any kind by the action of any explosives or other forms of energy and includes first artillery hand grenades right pistols or weapons of any kind designed or adapted for the discharge of any noxious liquid gas or other such thing second accessories for any such firearm designed or adapted to diminish the noise or flash caused by the firing thereof third parts of and machinery for manufacturing firearms and fourth carriages platforms and appliances for mounting transporting and serving artillery section 2h defines prohibited ammunition which says prohibited ammunition means any ammunition contained or designed or adapted to contain any noxious liquid gas or other such thing and includes bombs rockets grenades shells articles designed for torpedo service and submarine mining and such other articles as the central government may by official gazette specify to be prohibited ammunition section 2i prohibited arms means first firearms so designed or adapted that if pressure is applied to the trigger missiles continue to be discharged until pressure is removed from the trigger or the magazine containing the missile is empty or second weapons of any description designed or adapted for the discharge of any noxious liquid gas or other such thing and includes artillery anti aircraft and anti tank firearms and such other arms as the central government may by notification in the official gazette is specified to be prohibited arms the acquisition possession manufacture sale import export and transport of arms and ammunition is regulated through licenses in accordance with the arms act 1959 therefore in order to carry and possess firearms a valid license is required the requirement for a valid license are that the person should be above 21 years of age and must not be convicted of any offense or must not have served any term under chapter 8 of crpc it also provides that no one can hold more than 3 firearms the firearms must be smooth bore gun having barrel not less than 20 inches for the purpose of protection sports and crop protection or 0.22 bore rifle or an air rifle to be used for practicing the target by a member of the rifle club recognized by the government thus the possession of guns for the purpose of collection is not allowed even the license is necessary for the manufacture sale import or export etc of arms and ammunition the law provides for wide flexibility and discretion to licensing authorities in case of grant or denial of licenses while these provisions were kept on the books under the assumption that they would be used judiciously and towards serving the public interest the real life experience of the applicants belly this assumption for example in many jurisdictions the licensing authority perforce requires all the applicants to submit for the review property papers 
and income tax returns. This despite the fact that the Arms Act 1959 makes it very clear in the section 14.2 that the licensing authority shall not refuse to grant any license to any person merely on the ground that such person does not own or possess sufficient property. Section 13 makes provision for the grant of licenses which are to be issued for a period of 3 years or for a shorter period on the payment of the fees and conditions as are specified in the arms rules 1962 unless revoked earlier in accordance with section 15. Section 13 recognizes a right to a license and makes provision for the grant of licenses. Upon application made to the licensing authority, the licensing authority is bound to grant a license for acquiring and possessing a firearm or ammunition by a citizen of India in respect of gun used for protection or sport or for crop protection or a rifle to be used for target practice by a member of a rifle club or a rifle association licensed or recognized by central government. It is obligatory upon the licensing authority to grant a license also where an applicant for a license satisfies that the licensing authority that he has good reasons for obtaining it. Apart from the cases where the firearm is required for protection or sport or crop protection or for target practice in a rifle club or rifle association, anyone is entitled to it if he has good reason for obtaining it. There must be a good reason for obtaining the license and that condition regulates the grant of license. The requirement has been imposed to prevent abuse of the right by the members of the public. Nonetheless, as soon as the condition is satisfied, the grant is obligatory and it is not open to a licensing authority to refuse a license arbitrarily. Section 14 of the Act specifies some considerations on the strength where of the licensing authority shall refuse to grant a license. These considerations are in very short. A. License applied for being in respect of any prohibited arms or prohibited ammunition. B. The applicant believed to be disqualified from acquiring, having in his possession or carrying any arms or ammunition. C. The applicant being of unsound mind. D. The applicant is for any reason unfit for a license under this act. Or E. Considerations of the security of public peace or for public safety might justify refusal to grant such a license. Section 17 talks about the variation, suspension and revocation of licenses by the licensing authority. Even he may suspend the license by order in writing recording the reasons as are mentioned in section 17.3. In the same section, the power is also to provide to the central government to suspend or revoke or direct any licensing authority to suspend or revoke all licenses granted under the act throughout India or any part thereof by an order in the official gazette with regard to it. This is about this module. Chapter 4 of the Act, which ranges from section 19 to 24b, deals with the powers and procedures of any police officer or any other officer, especially empowered in that behalf by the central government, to demand the production of license or in absence of it or on refusal to produce or to show the license, has the power to seize such arm or ammunition. Section 19 deals with the deposit of arms etc. The possession of which ceases to be unlawful due to the expiration of the on duration or suspension or revocation of license or by the issue of notification under section 4 to the officer in charge of the nearest police station or with licensed dealer under the conditions prescribed in such regard. The magistrate under this chapter has the power to make the search and seizure of house or premises, vessels, 
vehicles for arms etc the chapter also empowers the central government to prohibit the possession and carrying of arms etc in the disturbed areas public places etc the unlawful manufacturing and selling of firearms attracts punishment of 3 years which may extend up to 7 years imprisonment along with fine punishment of possession of prohibited arms may extend from 5 to 10 years with fine one who possesses the arms etc with intent to use them for unlawful purpose is punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 7 years with fine one who causes death by using such weapons shall be punished with death penalty one who knowingly buys arms from the person who is not authorized to sell them may face imprisonment up to 3 years with fine that is all about this module the arms act 1959 also deals with the power of the central government to number 1 exempt any person or class of persons either generally or in relation to such description of arms and ammunition as may be specified in the notification or exclude any description of arms or ammunition or withdraw any part of india from the operation of all or any of the provisions of this act second as often as may be cancel any such notification and again subject by a like notification the person or class of persons or the description of arms and ammunition or the part of india to the operation of such provisions third direct a consensus to be taken of all firearm in any area and empower any officer of the government to take such census fourth direct any power or function which may be exercised or performed by it under this act other than the power under section 41 or the power under section 44 may be exercised or performed also by a such officer or authority subordinate to central government or b such state government or such officer or authority subordinate to state government as the case may be specified fifth make rules for any or all of the matters as a the appointment jurisdiction control and functions of licensing authorities including the areas and the categories of arms and ammunition for which they may grant licenses b the form and particulars of application for the grant or renewal of a license and where the application is for the renewal of a license the time within which it shall be made c the form in which and the conditions subject to which any license may be granted or refused renewed varied suspended or revoked d where no period has been specified in this act the period for which any license shall continue to be in force e the fees payable in respect of any application for the grant or renewal of a license and in respect of any license granted or renewed and the manner of paying the same f the manner in which the maker's name the manufacturer's number or other identification mark of a firearm shall be stamped or otherwise shown thereon g the procedure for the test or proof of any firearms h the firearms that may be used in the course of training the age limits of persons who may use them and the conditions for their use by such persons i the authority to whom appeals may be preferred under section 18 the procedure to be followed by such authority and the period within which appeal shall be preferred the fees to be paid in respect of such appeals and the refund of such fees j the maintenance of records or accounts of anything done under a license other than a license under section 3 or section 4 k the entry and inspection by any police officer 
or by any officer of government empowered in this behalf of any premises or other place in which arms or ammunition are or is manufactured or in which arms or ammunition are or is kept by a manufacturer of or dealer in such arms or ammunition and the exhibition of the same to such officer l the conditions subject to which arms or ammunitions may be deposited with a licensed dealer or in a unit armory as required by subsection 1 of section 21 and the period on the expiry of which the things so deposited may be forfeited m any other matter which is to be or may be prescribed the armed rules are framed by the central government in exercise of the powers conferred by section 5 9 10 11 12 13 16 17 18 21 41 14 read with section 44 of the arms act 1959 these rules covers rules regarding classification of arms or ammunition the licensing authority and the forms of licenses and the appeals with regard to them these rules also provides for the reasons to be communicated to the appellate authority in certain cases restriction in granting licenses for acquisition possession or carrying of arms or ammunition the restrictions imposed by the central government these rules also deal with the rules relating to import export transport manufacture conversion shortening repair test sale etc of the arms and ammunition to deposit of arms and ammunition for the safe custody under circumstances as are specified in section 21 and otherwise these rules also provide for granting validation and renewal of licenses and their requisite fees they also provide for the classification of arms and ammunitions licenses and their acquisition possession export import etc and the forms for which their acquisition possession export import etc under schedule 1 2 and 3 respectively the central government also enacted the arms rules 2016 amending the rules of 1962 thereby making these rules workable in the contemporary society this is all about this module the arms act 1959 has been amended from time to time as the arms amendment act 1971 which is fifth act 55 of 1971 the arms amendment act 1983 act number 25 of 1983 the arms amendment act 1985 act number 39 of 1985 the arms amendment act 1988 act number 42 of 1988 the arms act tries to control and prohibit the use of illegal arms and ammunition these provisions made are strict so as to curb mines of unregistered and illegally made country arms but their implication is not taking place in a proper way and some of the provisions need to be stricter like imposition of fines for the protection of the fundamental right as right to life which is included in the right to protect one's life and in case of peril that arms carried may prove a vital element to one trying to save his life so friends hope that you have enjoyed and now have the idea about the regulation of arms and ammunition in the society thank you